Meet Amica. It's clearly robotic and also, well, very human-like. The Uncanny Valley, when something artificial triggers a feeling which can go from super cute to super creepy, happens in an instant. But there are actually two Uncanny Valleys, one static and one for motion. And this team of designers and roboticists think they figured out how to avoid the fall. We have this really strong notion of biological motion. So you very, very rarely mistake a machine for a living thing. And we wanted to play with that idea. So what is it about the way that a machine moves that will make you believe in it as if it's alive? Wire talk with Will Jackson, founder and CEO of Engineered Arts, to understand how they design, prototype, and test their humanoid robots. Cracking the code of dynamic movement has been a continuous journey of prototypes and designs for engineered arts. Amica is their latest. Instead of being sort of photorealistic, we're more concerned about what is the essence of being human. And it's not just visual, it's, it's this dynamic data, it's this movement data. If you come close, what, what should happen? Um, so we have a change in expression, so the, the focus of the eyes comes in tighter. I think we went through 10 different attempts of uh, getting a smile, and it was just trying to get the, the crease in the, in the skin when, when the robot smiles. That was really difficult, and those creases in the brow as well. So we ended up having to add various fibers and parts that would tension the, the skin inside. Part of what the programmers here are doing is um, they're studying people and looking at how people behave and how can we can mimic these kind of behaviors. Why do we do that? It's a communication tool. So if the robot behaves in the way you expect and it makes expressions that you understand, you can do a lot of powerful communication with that. You know, you go to the cinema and you don't look at the screen and say, oh, look, some red pixels and some blue pixels. You immerse into it and you, you become part of that story. What we're doing is taking that kind of willing suspension of disbelief and putting it into the physical world. Amaka is a communication robot built to entertain and educate. Engineered Arts focuses on designing the gestures, look, and movement of the robotic systems. They leave the AI and what's being said to the universities and companies that buy them. Each unit takes about 12 to 16 weeks to make and costs between $120,000 and $500,000. So how do they do it? The first thing you learn is that you're never going to match human. <laughs> so the first thing you learn is how to deal with disappointment. So we were trying to mimic the way that human vertebrae worked. And then these red cords here are like the muscles. There were six motors on this as well. So enormously big and bulky. Problem is that we have these incredibly effective actuators. Human muscle is, has this huge power density and very, very fine force control. This one in front of me is a version two. So on paper, this looked kind of cool and I, I drew it all out and I came back into work and I thought with a mechanical design team and said, hey guys, can you turn this into reality? And, and it just didn't barely move at all. And then we realized there was so much friction in all of this complexity and in, in all of this kind of cable drive in here that just all the power of the motors was lost in this drive. So I spent maybe three, four months just working on this. And then you just, at the end of it, it's just like, wow, doesn't work at all, start again. I think we actually went through seven different versions. By the time we got to this one, we dropped the idea of having seven vertebrae because we realized you, you couldn't actually see it. But human movement isn't just affected by how our bones, joints, and muscles move together, but also by the movement of our skin. You have 45, I think it is, different facial action units that you can do. So it's everything from a little tiny muscle pull in here to uh, your inner brows, middle brows, outer brows, mouth corners. How do they transition from into a smile and then back into a neutral expression? So we did a lot of work actually studying human faces. So these faces are made of silicone. Uh, it tears really easily. So we end up having to put all kinds of 
fibers and fabric and things inside that gave it some more strength. So it's a kind of composite material. The head is actually used up with the motors for driving the face. And then we try to make the skin as thin as we can. So it goes down to about one millimeter thick. Their models are all made in-house, allowing ideas to go quickly from design to production. They categorize and record every part they make. If something doesn't work now, it may work later. Amica is built on the years of learning and design from earlier models. So Robothespian was our first kind of robot. That was a hybrid pneumatic electric robot, which is quite an unusual design. We were really interested, how can we make a compliant robot? How can we make a robot that's safe around people? We did that with, with the early ones by using pneumatics. So air is compressible, whereas Highly geared motors, on, you can't really back drive them. You, there's no transparency there. You'll notice some of the mo motion is quite jerky. It's a little bit clunky. There is actually a very small compressor inside Amica, which is used for the arm balance mechanism. So the air is used more like a spring within the system. This is definitely something we discovered with uh, Robothespian, you know, 15 year old robot, that using this hybrid pneumatic electric approach could be really efficient. So this is Alfred, uh, he's currently dressed up as a surgeon. He's a, a Mesmer type robot, which means he's got natural skin. Actually touching his face, there's actually stubble here. Every little piece of hair on his face is inserted manually. Even his wobbly little ear lobes are always gonna punch me. It's a very, very different aesthetic to Amica. So Amica, we wanted to make robot as robot, no pretense that it's human. And we were more concerned about the movement. With the Mesmer type robots, uh, they're made to have a more human look. So we've got this soft skin, and you see all these wrinkles on the hands. Amica debuted in December 2021. The team is still fine tuning its design and functionality with plans to perfect its hand's dexterity. So all these subtle things come and, and kind of mean the thing doesn't work. So what we gained here was just knowledge. And, and the knowledge is way more important than whether it worked or not. 